Legend tells of an ancient mythical power that has lain undisturbed for thousands of years. But now, it awakens. It used to rule the world, but now, it's merely a relic of a bygone era. Such a weapon can be acquired, pre-battle scarred, for a very small sum of money, but a potential owner should regard this with caution. For this ancient, forgotten technology has several well-known weaknesses. The minuscule Super 16 sensor and a greater appetite for batteries than the average railgun. This can wear down even the most dedicated camera operator. Whilst remedies are available, they can be very bulky and sometimes a bit useless. Why would any sane person deal with all these travesties? image quality. Whilst the sensor may be tiny, it provides 13 stops of dynamic range, a number that still holds up in 2020. Your suffering is also rewarded with four flavors of 10-bit ProRes, as well as Cinema DNG Raw. Did you blow up the sky? Nope. Wrong color temperature. Nope. Set the ISO too low? Never mind. These are cinema-grade video formats in a 500-pound camera. Accessories not included. With a bit of practice, you can get some spectacular quality. The high bitrate codecs and 13 stops of dynamic range are the kind of features you'd expect to find on a proper cinema camera. But if you want the quality of a proper cinema camera, you've got to deal with the workflow too. This footage needs grading. Yes, there's the video mode, but that looks so hideous that you should never use it only film in log mode. With some color space transforms, you can correct the footage without too much difficulty, or you can use the color management in the raw tab. But you will find knowing your way around DaVinci Resolve is pretty much a prerequisite if you want to use this camera, especially when shooting raw. Even though the footage is only 1080p, half of these modern 4K cameras don't have anywhere near the bitrate for proper 4K, meaning that in some cases, 1080p can actually look better. This is one of those cases. You want slow motion? You want low light? You want an easy to use camera? Well then buy something else, this is not the camera for you. But if you want a cinema camera that you can hold in the palm of your hand, and your budget is also palm sized, then this camera still has a place on your wish list. The BMPCC is a part of history. Countless projects have been shot on it. It taught me what it takes to use a raw workflow. It taught me how much work cinema cameras can be. Its successors, the Pocket 4K and 6K, are some of the most compelling cameras available right now. The original Pocket was ahead of its time, yet it went head-to-head -head with cameras costing far more than it did, making future cinema cameras more affordable and laying the groundwork for cinematic mirrorless cameras. Despite all of this, I found it was a pain to use, so much so that my next camera, the Canon C100 Mark II, was almost the exact opposite of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. Even so, I've thought about selling this camera a few times, but yet, I haven't managed to let go of it. 